we're here to talk to you today about financial scams. Really not fun, but absolutely important to bring awareness to this topic and, and really explore some layers below just the surface of what's happening. So we, yes. what do you think about when I tell you the word financial scam? Financial scams are all around us really yes um, we hear about it all the time we especially hear vulnerable groups being targeted by financial scams i always hate to hear about elderly people oh, being yes. um, targeted um, with financial scams but i too have fallen prey to financial scams and you know for me the the embarrassing thing about my story about the financial scam is it's like so linked into my own ego mm. um and so should i share my yeah let's share? start with that i have okay. like so much stories but okay. i want to definitely hear that okay so i went through a very major financial scam um it was about three years ago now so i received a note um that i had been given an award um and so it was and i know that this is like uh, so typical that you'd be like because the, the the email was coming and it was actually from India and um, they said that they were doing this it, it was like a global um, award that goes all around the world and this year it was being hosted in India and they were awarding women who are doing you know great things in business um, and they wanted me to come and they wanted me to speak at it and then receive my award um, and Usually, you know, you would think that you would just kind of brush it off. But I saw that on when I looked them up online, I saw that a lady that I respected that I do business with had also had this award listed on her uh, LinkedIn. So I was like, oh, like she's like a prominent businesswoman that I know. Like this seems like it's a legitimate thing. So I looked in a little bit more to it and they were like, yeah, we're um, asking our delegates. We have like a special hotel that's blocked and special room rates and whatever else. Um, and this is what's this is what we're doing. This is what's happening. So I, of course, and like, you know, me, I was like, we're all going to India. Like, this is just what I decided to do. <laughs> I was like, well, that's it. And we're all going to India and like we're gonna take the whole team and we're gonna fly everyone out and we're gonna go to India we're gonna have and like why wouldn't we go to India like it's it's being called to us and I've always wanted to go to India by the way and I still do yeah um, but to also put things in perspective you're somebody who've won a lot of awards who've been really approached by global places and and things like this so it's not something that would stand out of context yeah no I, I absolutely have have definitely received awards that I'm grateful for again I have a weird thing around the awards thing because I for a, a very long period of time became very kind of addicted to accolades and awards because it was a way for me to mask my unworthiness that I felt in in just like shame and stuff that I hadn't worked through from my childhood and so every single time that I would get an award it would kind of revalidate myself and I became very very like needing these awards so not only did I want to go to India but I wanted this award like my ego wanted this award and my ego wanted to take everyone to India and have this experience and you know I am just a bit of a I don't know I'm, I'm quite impulsive and I'm, I'm quite a free spirit and so sometimes these things can get the best of me so long and short I went ahead and I booked everyone to go to India I didn't get our flights but I said we're all gonna get it I gave the deposit for all of the rooms and all of these pieces and long and short of the whole story um, as you know it was kind of approaching we got an email all of a sudden this Thing isn't happening anymore but I wasn't able to get my deposit refunded and it worked out to be like with the currency difference and whatever it was like seven thousand dollars Canadian so I was like quite significant and I felt so sort of lost because it was so far away and like I don't even know like I, I, I didn't even know how to get anyone on the phone kind of thing it was such a bad scenario um, and so I was gonna just let it go as awful as that felt and that's like a huge Huge loss like a huge amount of money um, and my my partner Jeff was like you are not letting that go like there's no way like this is ridiculous like you can ask for your deposit back like we're gonna figure it out so he ended up drafting a email and a letter and basically like posing as my 
uh, you know, in-house legal counsel and writing to this place. And so they basically said, well, we'll, we can give it back to you, but it's going to be in rupees and it's going to be like, basically they sent me a check. They, we went through a whole process. They said they'd give it back to me by the time they sent back the check. It was an uncashable check in Canada in rupees like would have to be cashed in india essentially in order to be able to get the money back so it was like now another layer of the scam like we went through this whole thing thought it was resolved thought the money was coming back it finally arrived and it's this check that's like truly i can't cash it here like Mm -hmm. no bank would take it so wildly enough jeff and i were planning on going to nepal so we brought it with us to nepal to see if one of our friends could figure out a way to get it cashed still no came back with this check like i'm losing this money it's not going to happen and jeff was so persistent with me he was like you are trying to reframe your relationship with money this is before i had a seal so jeff was like channeling a little bit of the financial therapist uh, without even knowing he was like um you have lots of business colleagues that do business in india he was like you should speak to one of them and see if they can help you and i did i actually ended up asking one of my um uh you know uh, colleagues uh, businessman that I know very well who is of Indian descent and works here on Bay Street and he ended up in his next trip to India going back getting my money and bringing it back to me and I finally had my money returned so it Mm. was just a whole really interesting scenario I would never normally go to those links to get it back but he Jeff was really saying like you're the one who says that Mm. you want to rebalance your relationship with money this is a massive amount of money like you're basically telling the 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 universe that you don't care and you need to like recultivate that so yeah. that was one of my this scams. is so interesting I'll, I'll share with you uh, some stories about some of the scams i've came across uh, both personally and as a professional yeah. but before i get into it it's very interesting that you said that normally i wouldn't go to that extra mile to get this money back and it is reinforcing that message that i don't care about money and this is a very common thing that this it's interesting that we dig deeper into these layers of financial scams because it's how you treat that scam and the behavior and the reactions you have to it that helps you highlight what's the underlying relationship you have with money if you become overly um like like mad and angry and also feeling victimized then there's that pattern of victimization that usually runs into like I'm, I'm always the victim um you know i'm very bad with money it's reinforcing this like victimhood but then if you're on the other side we're like oh whatever the, like money comes and goes and just just i just felt attitude. like i'm stupid and i deserve to lose my money for doing that so wh- what am i gonna do i just have to accept and like i i wet the bed now i have to lay in it is that this is that the term i've never heard of it (laughs) you made your bed now you have to lay in it that's what they used to say which is a horrible term i don't like that but i just yeah i didn't have the worthiness to think that i could even deserve to ask for it back because i was like i'm the i'm my i think my script underneath it was like i'm bad with money yeah i'm impulsive with money i make stupid you know choices with money and therefore i pay the consequences yeah Yeah. And and so i was just ready to like let it like blow out the door and and that's what's important about exploring these topics it's honestly all these different scripts that we surface as we explore so one of the scams that like as fresh as last week uh thursday or friday like literally a few days ago uh one of my neighbors in my building i'm very friendly so i know a lot of the neighbors and this particular person he's a very re- amazing retired senior again you mentioned earlier it breaks your heart when the victims are usually senior which in this case he is he lived on the penthouse of the building so he's invited me and my fiance up to see his unit because it's like one of the most gorgeous units in toronto uh, with like almost a 360 view of the city so he definitely is a very uh, you know, financially stable individual, very uh, respectful in the community. Uh, he had a beautiful career and beautiful wife and kids, like absolutely somebody I admire. So it just so happened that I bumped into him in the gym that morning. And like a few hours later, I receive an email saying, hey, Asil, can you do a favor? Can you do me a favor? And it's 
signed i've received emails from him before and he always signs it with cheers and the letters are capitalized capitalized cheers across the board so i'm like okay uh, anything for you uh, what can what, what do what do what can i help you with and he said oh i'm trying to buy this gift card uh for my friend's daughter it's not going through can you please you know help me out and i'll give you the money and again it's signed the same way he does and this is a person that's you know used to be an economist so i it's not like he's somebody who's not comfortable with technology or buying something online but i still didn't suspect anything by that time because the, the, there was no reason for me to suspect it um, and then I said absolutely uh, I can do that so like how much money do you want me to buy f on this gift card he said $300 and uh, her name is this uh, and here's the birthday message that you would write like just look at to the extent mm -hmm. of, of this so I started feeling something off uh, and I was like, okay, let me just make sure. Like, it's just something about this just didn't resonate. So I said, uh, do you mind giving me your number so I can give you a call and we can discuss this further? Like, it could be that he legitimately wanted my help, right. but it could also something something in my gut told me something is off here. Um, and then the email I received was like, okay, something is really happening here because the email then was oh, I just lost my phone and blah, blah, blah. I would have called you otherwise, but let's just communicate over email. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll call you when I, you know, buy a new phone tomorrow or something. And I'm so grateful that I lived in the same building as this person. So I literally just went up to his to this uh, house, knocked his door. His wife uh, she came and I'm like, I think your husband's email is hacked. And she's like, yes, we've been on the phone all day. People across the world are calling us about this. What? Like, yes. So, wow. but the crazy part is that the person almost studied the way the, the the language this person speaks would use would use yeah. and was constructing emails with that wow. so like the the accuracy mm -hmm. like i could have like i think what what threw me off is like the amount of 300 dollars uh to his friends to his friend's uh baby or something um and i was like okay you're like that's too much money for the friend's baby well that could still be legitimate yeah. that could but 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 something about it told me let me just make sure because like yeah what if it's not like i i i thought maybe f the 50 dollar wouldn't but here's the interesting thing i wouldn't yeah. have asked that question if it was 50 dollars. the 300 dollars made me want to add this extra layer of Check. yes wow so interesting so that was like an almost scam almost scam. Yeah, well, almost it, well scam. it is because a lot of his friends actually ended Were up scammed. buying yeah. paying wow. uh, this uh, gift card situation uh but the other um so before i share other stories of of different things that i've been exposed to uh it's i think it's very interesting to explore this uh, from how you react to like we said earlier so in this case I was vigilant enough to add this extra layer but like I also noticed in my reflection after that like I was saying earlier a different amount would have yielded a different result from me mm -hmm. so this extra uh the, the the careful attitude I have around money is really just a correlation mm -hmm. of how much money I'm letting out so I think every one of us have like this threshold yes. at which point I like what is it like, for example, do you still care about losing a dollar or is it the amount of money that that you feel you would care about? Like, is it the principle or is it the amount? So I, I again, for me, and I might be a strange, <laughs> strange case here <laughs> because I have my own very deep, twisted <laughs> problems with money. Um, and uh, I, I just as you asked me that question, I reflect back on walking down the street with my best friend growing up. I've talked about her a lot without naming her on on uh, the show that she was of a different socioeconomic background. So she was wealthy, had a lot of money. I didn't. We were walking down the street. It was windy. I had some cash in my hand. A $20 bill blew out of my hand. And it was like I was going to have to go run after the $20 bill and like in front of everyone and be like trying to catch it mm. and whatever. And instead, I chose to be like, like let it go and mm. I'm just gonna keep walking like I don't even and she was like are you crazy like go get the $20 bill and I was like nope and I just kept walking and didn't get it because I didn't want to be like 
needing it back. Oh my goodness. I didn't want to show that I needed it back. It's so interesting because the layers to that story, it's like you're literally, you are literally running after money in that case. Yeah. But it's also interesting because she who comes from an affluent background was like, wait, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go get the money? And I was like, and, and I didn't even realize at the time, like obviously you're not at this, you know, time I was a young kid understanding the subconscious programming and patterning around it. But truly, this is a pattern and a through line in my life of when these things happen, I tend to kind of be like, oh, well, yeah. like I don't want to look like I need it so badly. And it's not yeah. that I don't want to look. It's not conscious like that. It's subconscious, oh, subconscious. Uh, yeah. in such a major way until, you know, we start yeah. rooting this out. So another scam story is a very dear person in my life recently wanted to hire a moving company. So careful. Uh, for you who are either hiring companies randomly off Kijiji or like um, not really doing your due diligence before you contract with people uh, because this happens a lot and what that person thought she agreed on is about two to three hundred dollar bill um, the bill came to be a two thousand dollar bill by the time she actually uh, moved her stuff she was only moving like a bed uh, and a sofa so she didn't expect to pay more than a couple hundred dollars for mm-hmm. them um, and they were very much harassing her in the way they made her sign a contract that was very convoluted in the way it was written uh so now she can't even take it to the police because she technically did sign it but the way it was like written with these extra charges that were super like insidious to to even understand and notice and it just broke my heart because this person works so hard for their money like she 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 puts every single effort to put money aside at the end of each month so that is probably at least a year worth of saving for her Uh, Uh, but but also just how vulnerable she was in that situation and it just really broke my heart to to see so these financial scams happen by taking advantage of either seniors or newcomers people who can't speak much english i mean that's if you're living in canada this is some of the scams that are common to see but another story that i remembered from a professional lens i remember having one of my clients she was an executive in a in a really uh, established corporation she made i think about 200 to 250 thousand dollars salary so really established in her career she fell for the typical what we call nigerian scam Mm -hmm. like you get this email Mm -hmm. about uh, you needing to click on some link or whatever and she fell for it wow and and the reason i bring that up is because Uh, in this particular situation this is a client who was feeling so much guilt and shame going into the bank obviously there was a lot of judgment from the different advisors that she tried to kind of engage their house to solicit their help to get her money back Um, people obviously were like what were you thinking but when I met with her I was really fascinated by the fact that she had this pattern show up so many times in her life and then now that I have the financial therapy background that I do I would have probably approach that situation so much differently understanding Mm. that there's a deeper emotional layer here absolutely that this person tends to how do you say that word perpetuate yeah (laughs) re-perpetuate the scams yeah yeah i uh english and me sometimes have a funny relationship um so so that's a really interesting scenario because this is an educated woman, an executive, a really good career. So the reason I bring that story specifically to highlight that it's not just the typical vulnerable population that would fall into these scams. There's people it could who be you anybody. Would, it could be yeah. anybody. Yeah. And that's why we need to address it, like be very compassionate with ourselves if we find ourselves in that situation. Yes. We all are subjected to it. It's One big. of the things that <laughs> I think is so important though in this particular age that we live in in a digital economy now in this world where you can at the click of a button like purchase something or our paypal accounts or like everything on our phone and it's just it's such a heightened time for us to be a little bit more aware of how to keep our finances secure and to keep ourselves intuitive tapped in like just like you you know i love how you use your intuition to kind of feel into like something's not adding up here even though it all kind of looks right yeah there's this seen him in the gym so a lot of it like the first few emails i didn't suspect this 
single thing. Yeah, of course. Like you thought it was completely, completely normal. So I think it's just so important that we do normalize this topic by saying that, you know, we've both been, been, you know, victim to yeah. these scams yes. and that there are scams. Mm. Um, and But you know, I want to mention something interesting about that story, actually. I hesitated reaching out to him or going up and checking if this is legit because I thought, what if it was legit? How is the, is he gonna think that I'm like cheap or wow. not interested or, or not uh, you know asking too many questions or like not as graciously wanting to help? Like I actually resisted mm-hmm. asking these questions as well because of the perception or how what is he gonna think of me? So sometimes I've noticed as well with some of my clients who fall into these traps. They usually have a very prestigious career that they didn't want to look like somebody like who care about money. Uh-huh. So they fall into these scams because it's like, oh yeah, like I have the money. Why would I add this layer of additional due diligence or whatever? Right. It's like, you know, I have the money mine as well, right? Yeah. So there's sometimes this added egoic uh you know reason to why we do what we do and sometimes it's the other direction where you're always used to being victimized even though you're not telling yourself that like on a conscious level Uh, but you're just welcoming and attracting these opportunities constantly fraudulent ways to lose your money anyways we can go on and on but as usual we have to wrap things up with some food for thought for you to really start reflecting on not just financial scams in your life but like i said the layers beyond how how you react to them why you do react the certain way uh, the stories you tell yourself around them the emotions that they trigger in you uh, and if there's any patterns or consistent things that you noticed uh, show up for you because there's lots to kind of explore in these particular areas absolutely and if you see a pattern or you feel like this is happening to you more frequently there may be something deeper that's going on that's mm. kind of drawing in these experiences 100%. so it's really really interesting stuff so we invite you to find out more and go to consciouseconomics.ca and we're so glad that you were with us we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next week